wonder when we hear this moment if this is sauce or for air. Are these fireworks or gunshots? Certainly, eight-year-old Ahmad wondered the same when he was playing on his little tambourine at uncle's engagement party until he wandered no more, forever. Ahmad came to our emergency room unconscious. The doctors and his parents alike were not sure what was going on with him. He looked normal. He was dressed up in a white shirt and black pants. His white shirt was as white as snow. He had little highlighted curls in his hair. He looked untouched. They didn't find out what was going on with him until they decided to obtain a scan of his head, a picture to look inside. And there it was, a little bullet, a stray bullet, a little larger than your pencil eraser, had gone in through his little curls, his skull, his brain, and landed in the back of his next spine. That's when I met Ahmad. Ahmad was lying in a bed in my intensive care unit, hooked to a breathing machine. He looked like he was sleeping like Sleeping Beauty. The bullet's position was so critical and hard to get to that every single neurosurgeon we consulted refused to take it out, or touch it, or remove it. Few days later, Ahmad passed away. He passed away and broke many hearts. He broke his heart, the heart of his parents, and he broke my heart. But I was also very angry by this tragedy. To me, as a mother and as a pediatrician, this was a 100% preventable death. This was a life wasted. Wasted because someone, somewhere, decided to hold a rifle or a gun and shoot. A gun that was originally made to kill, and kill it did. Of course, when you hold a weapon or a gun up and shoot, you have no idea where the bullet will land, how far it will go, what trajectory it will take, and what life it will claim. A while back, a US Army Surgeon General, who happened to have an inquisitive mind, decided to study this phenomenon. He installed a stage on calm water and got a machine gun. And he decided to see if he shot bullets at 90 degrees where the bullets will land. Guess what? Out of the 500 bullets fired out of the machine gun, only four landed on stage. And 496 splashed in the water in unpredictable locations. This goes to tell you that first, you can never really shoot at 90 degrees. And second, when you shoot at 90 degrees, the force of the bullet and gravity are opposed the bullet will become slower, it will drag, and it will fall close. All the other bullets will fall far away. I was so angry and saddened by Ahmad's death that I spoke about it to everyone I know. Poor husband prob probably heard it 500 times. Maria, one of my residents, probably heard it a million times. Who here has heard me say this story? Yara, Aya, do you remember me telling you this story? I needed help. I even went on Facebook. Yes, don't laugh. I know your generation don't even Facebook anymore. But I went on Facebook and I asked for help. I said, what can we, as good citizens of this country, do to avoid these preventable, tragic losses? Do you think people liked and commented? Of course they did. So much so that few months later, I was joined by a group of doctors and I formed what is now known as the Stray Bullet Project. And we started doing what doctors do best. We studied the problem. We came to realize that the problem was even bigger than we had originally anticipated. Kids were dying during celebrations, were dying during weddings, were dying during engagement parties. 
They were dying during political speeches, during official exam results announcements. They were even dying during funerals. How ironic. You're taking the ch a child with you to a funeral and your child ends up dying. Out of the 167 reportable injuries in 2016, 50% were children. Out of the seven deaths, four were children. I want you to take a minute to look at these more recent statistics and names. Wissam Blay was visiting from Qatar, was swimming in his grandparents' sw uh, swimming pool when he died of a stray bullet. Ahmad Brahim was playing soccer. Bettina Raidi was on her balcony. She died during a political speech, instantly on her balcony. Hussein Khalidin got paralyzed. Sari Sabahai is instantaneously on the scene. But this is not only a Lebanese tradition. It's still culturally accepted in some parts of Latin America and in Eastern Europe and the Balkan countries. People still hold guns and shoot during celebrations. In the United States, seven children die every day from accidental bullet injury from domestic home weapons, from domestic weapons. That's because domestic home ownership of guns is associated with higher rates of children's death. When the president of the American University of Beirut, Dr. Fadl Khouri, knew about what we were doing, AUB became interested in our project and they adopted it as a CSR. CSR is a corporate social responsibility. It's an action when a big institution or an organization decides to give back to the community it is serving by adopting a noble cause or even a behavioral experiment. A few months later, we were joined by people who were not doctors, and the project moved on beyond the studying phase. We set three goals. We wanted to raise awareness about the impact of stray bullets on children and on the society in general. We wanted to change the laws around that matter, and we wanted to shoot, yes, shoot, this tradition. Through our research, we realized that to change the laws, uh, we needed to change the laws about this matter because the laws were either clear but not enforced or vague and could be played around. If you are interested in law, you'd appreciate that laws need to be really clear and incriminating, otherwise lawyers will, will, will try to play around them. And being in Lebanon, everyone knows everyone, Everyone has a wasta, and the rules can be bended. Let me give you some example. In Lebanon, it is legal to own a licensed gun, and it's not a felony if you shot someone else due to self-defense, if that someone had a weapon, had a similar weapon. So gun for gun, knife for knife. Doesn't really make sense to me. In Lebanon, if you shoot someone, or if someone shoots someone and they are able to prove that it was unintentional, they can spend in prison as well as three months. If they have a lot of connection and money, they can spend as little as three days. In Lebanon, if you want to prove that this stray bullet killed someone or killed a child or a person, you actually have to be recording it. So if you happen to be recording a story for Instagram or Snapchat, because why else would you be recording, right? And you catch someone shooting from his gun, you travel with the bullet and prove that the bullet injured this other person, only then you can prove that this person died from this stray bullet. In Lebanon, shooting in the air is not a felony. It's a social offense like an unpaid parking ticket. So naturally, in our approach, we decided to reach out to politicians because that's how Lebanon functions, or rather dysfunctions. We met with some AUME alumni and faculty who promised to help, 
a promise that I still take with a grain of salt. We also reached out to some NGOs, including Nudge, who have promised to fund some of our initiatives and to even design a social experiment. We have designed TV commercials, social ads, uh, social media uh, ads and applications. We've been, um, we've been featured in academic magazines. We even presented at international conferences and national conferences. We even won the award in Chicago last month and we recorded a podcast. But guess what? Change starts with you. Change starts in schools and in colleges. It starts in Beirut and in the villages. It starts in home and in municipalities. It starts with the young generation. A generation that will spread awareness about this topic and about wasted lives like Ahmed. A generation that will refuse to hold a weapon and shoot because they might hurt or kill someone. You are the ones who will be telling your fathers, mothers, uncles, brothers, and cousins to hold a weapon. You know what? I grew up during a time of war. When I was growing up, people shot each other to kill, intentionally, on the streets and in homes, day and night. People didn't even celebrate at some times, let alone shoot during celebrations. And now that war is over, we are shooting during celebrations? We are shooting during political speeches? Some speeches are even for those who engaged war on us, and we are still shooting for them. Every time I hear the sound of Rsas or Fir'ea, my heart rate goes up because I got a flashback war days and I start questioning my safety, the safety of my family and of the people around me. I was unfortunate that none of my family member died from a stray bullet during the war. And God knows, and some of you know, there were so many opportunities for that to happen. In this day and age, it is not acceptable for anyone to die from a stray bullet during celebrations. It is not acceptable for anyone to shoot during celebration, to shoot from a weapon originally designed to kill. Help me kill this tradition. At the end of the day, all we are really asking is for people to celebrate in peace. Thank you.